What's my story? Did I ever have one? Where did I lose it? Father. Mother. Tell me, where can I find it? And cut. That was great. Hey, listen, I've really been enjoying these improv exercises, but I'm wondering when I'll get to see the script. <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> Eric, there is no script. Wait, what? Yeah. Scripts are for people who don't know how to just create an image. My films are more about raw emotions and slice of life kind of stuff. Well, that's good and all, but what's the point? I'm sorry? Even if you don't have a story, you should at least have a point you'd like to get across. Otherwise, the audience has no reason to invest in the film. But, Eric, there is a point to this film. Which is? I'm rich and I'm bored. Besides, the pretty images should be more than enough for the audience to invest. Now, go ahead and change to your next outfit so we can get to the bamboo garden to shoot the next scene. In the world of psychology, there's a fascinating phenomenon referred to as the Gansfeld effect. If a person stares long enough at an unchanging field of a single color, like say an arctic snowstorm, sensory deprivation tank, or maybe even a Derek Jarman movie, that person's eyes will stop sending signals to the brain, thus causing the brain to hallucinate images to fill in the missing information. Incidentally, this very same phenomenon is noticed in a particular art style called aniconism, where artists create elaborate, beautiful patterns that encompass the magnificent infinity of the entire universe. And the reasoning behind it all is that because you are shown nothing, you see everything. Now, why am I talking about this? Because it is the exact effect that Terrence Malick has been trying to achieve in his movies, and he keeps getting it wrong. Back in 2011, director Terrence Malick made an experimental arthouse film called The Tree of Life, which for the most part did not get a whole lot of positive reviews. Me personally, I find it to be a boring, directionless, pointless, utter waste of time, but I do think that there are still some positive aspects about it. For one thing, its cinematography is absolutely gorgeous. Its imagery is beautiful to look at, and it does have the most beautiful depiction of the creation of the universe that I've ever seen on film. Unfortunately, all that pleasant imagery just doesn't work. As I said before, the Gansfeld effect is when you're looking at nothing and seeing everything. But Tree of Life tries to show you everything, and because of that, you're ultimately seeing nothing. And because you're ultimately seeing nothing, it's just plain boring. Now again, that's just my personal take on this particular movie, and if you happen to like it, more power to you. I do not, will not, and should not hold it against you. If anything, I'm actually kind of jealous of you. If you want to see more insight out of this film, check out Nostalgia Critic's review of it. It's actually quite entertaining. Now, a little over five years later, Terrence Malick has tried to use that same style to different effects with Knight of Cups. And again, he doesn't really succeed. I'll give Knight of Cups points for one thing. At the very least, it has one singular direction. It has one singular point that it wants to get across. I'm not sure what his point really was, but the point that I gathered from this movie was rich people are bored. Just like with Tree of Life, the film doesn't really have a story so much as it has a presentation of a slice of life kind of situation. It follows a Hollywood screenwriter played by Christian Bale who's trying to rediscover who he really is. And the only reason I know that is because that is what the description on IMDb says. Nothing within the movie establishes any kind of goal or 
desire that the character has other than walking around town for two hours just glaring at everything. Now please understand, just because a movie doesn't have an actual story or story structure doesn't mean it doesn't have a point. It is entirely possible to have an entertaining, worthwhile, beautiful movie that doesn't follow any particular story structure. Derek Jarman made an entire film that's nothing but the color blue, and it is fantastic. Not because it's only a single color causing you to fill in the blanks of the visual information, but because it actually has a point, a statement. It has a goal. It has something that it needs to achieve, and it still manages to achieve it. If you have the opportunity to do so, please check out this film. So the bad news is, I personally do not recommend you see this film. But the good news is, at the very least, I can say that it is a whole lot better than Batman v Superman. Ugh. Ladies and gentlemen, I am the Norm. Thank you very much for watching.